Hello, welcome to Metals in Biology. In today's class, we will discuss nitrous oxide reductase and its model complex. Nitrous oxide as you may know is a greenhouse gas, it is also known as laughing gas. It has many detrimental effects on our nature, but also it is one of those gas which is involved in the nitrogen cycle. As you know the denitrification process involves nitrite to NO to N2O and finally nitrogen formation. From nitrate this whole process starts and there is of course nitrate assimilation and nitrogen fixation. Overall global nitrogen cycle is linked with nitrous oxide. The process by which nitrous oxide is converted to nitrogen is our major focus today. So, here as you can see nitrous oxide is going to nitrogen with the help of this enzyme known as nitrous oxide reductase also known as copper G side or copper Z side. Copper G is the believed catalytic cycle which has a mu 4 sulfido bridged tetranuclear copper core. As you can see 4 copper centers are bridged with this sulfide. Of course, this another center which was not clear at the beginning, I will come back to that latter is initially believed to be water molecule. Each of the copper centers are associated with ligands as you may be able to see here that this fourth copper center is associated with only one histidine. On the other hand, all other copper centers are having two histidines on them. This site once again is the center where this nitrous oxide is converted to nitrogen. It is a multi copper enzyme as you have seen four copper centers are there that catalyzes nitrous oxide plus two proton plus two electron going to nitrogen and water. As you clearly can see that this is having a copper sulphide structure or copper sulphide motif, the core of this is still unknown in the literature from synthetic community. The enzymatic studies so far are not very clear in terms of suggesting a clean pathway by which this nitrous oxide is getting activated and then of course, first it has to bind activated and then it should be converted to nitrogen. The mechanism of action of such copper G side is not clear till then. Let us look at some of the proposed mechanism, there are number of studies mainly with the computational works that suggest that a pathway involving nitrous oxide binding happens between the two copper centers. Of course, in addition to the copper G side there is another center known as copper A which is responsible for transferring electron that is required for the nitrous oxide reduction to convert it into nitrogen. Once again this nitrous oxide uh, requires these electrons in the whole process to occur and those electron transfer site can be considered as this dicopper thiolate or cysteine uh, bridged dicopper center which can act as electron transfer site. So, 
this site as you have seen earlier that these are copper A site. Okay. This does not participate in nitrous oxide reduction at all. This just provides electron does not participate directly, but provides electron for the nitrous oxide to, uh, to dinitrogen. Let us look at the mechanism by which perhaps nitrous oxide can be activated and then subsequently with the help of 2 proton and 2 electron can be converted to nitrogen and the complete catalytic cycle can be drawn. So, here is a putative mechanism of course, this can be still debated and especially the fact that uh, the structure need, be, need to be further modified at this point. In any case, if we assume that the 4 copper centers are bound with copper which is very clear from the crystal structure that is the case that 4 copper centers are bound with copper this is a sulphide uh, S2 minus sulphide and nitrous oxide is binding between these two copper centers. As you can see it, is be, it has been proposed that this nitrogen is bound with copper 1 and this copper 4 is bound with oxide. These are computational studies, some experimental studies are also done overall this is the mode of binding that is suggested for nitrous oxide. Once this is bound one can exclude nitrogen from here to get, uh, to get this copper oxo copper bridged. From here on a protonation uh, and uh, or subsequent this 2 electron transfer can lead to the overall completion of catalytic cycle. Of course, this protonation can directly happen simultaneously when nitrogen is going out to form this intermediate and subsequently it can be converted to the starting point. So, overall this nitrous oxide will bind between 2 copper centers, copper 1 and copper 4. Subsequently activation will take place and then removal of nitrogen will give rise to this copper oxo copper core which can undergo protonation or a direct protonation will lead to the nitrogen formation from which 2 electron and 1 proton can lead to the regeneration of the active site. Well, this um, proton and electron steps can be further debated which is more convenient which steps occur first as you can see one of these intermediate that we are talking over there can be taken up. So, we are talking about this intermediate, this intermediate putative intermediate can be taken up and a proton transfer first subsequently an electron transfer can be proposed to generate this intermediate hydroxo bound intermediate subsequently another proton and another electron will give rise to the a reduced form of the nitrous oxide reductase. As you can see that this perhaps is the preferred pathway, the other pathway involve are little more, more energy demanding perhaps therefore, this ET, PT, ET, PT electron transfer, proton transfer this pathway perhaps is not favorable and likely not to be happening. So, proton transfer, electron transfer proton transfer, electron transfer perhaps is the pathway that is happening. This is what computational studies are suggesting. Okay. So, overall as we have seen that nitrous oxide is binding between 2 copper center and the whole process still would require 2 proton and 2 electron, but the catalytic cycle is able to stepwise take up this proton and electron and then the whole catalytic cycle can be converted in the whole uh, can be completed the complete catalytic cycle would require regeneration of the catalyst which can be done as well and nitrous oxide can be reduced to nitrogen which is looking fantastic. But the problem is such uh, for synthetic chemist such a copper G site or 4 copper 1 sulphide structure is quite a dream. 
The, so this copper sulfide structure had actually uh, excited chemist, synthetic chemist or bioinorganic chemist to look into the copper sulfur compound synthesis and try to see if such a compound which is found in nitrous oxide reductase can be synthesized in laboratory. Till that a great synthetic model that, that mimics the structural as well as the functional activities of the nitrous oxide reductase is unknown, but studies are ongoing towards, towards understanding and better representing the me mechanism of such reaction. In order to understand the copper sulfur chemistry, uh, various uh, research groups have uh, invested heavily on this. We will discuss some of the ligand copper complexes uh, that is capable of reacting with sulfur or sulfur analogs to give the copper sulfur containing molecules. Let us look at some of those efforts which tries to mimic the activity of nitrous oxide reductase, but I must tell you that those mimic has not been that great yet. So, efforts are still on. Let us look at the initial studies or pre preliminary studies that has been done till that to solve or to understand the copper sulfur chemistry. Well, the first um, slide over here shows that four nitrogen centers or these famous TPA, TMPA ligand based will react with copper to give copper 1 T TMPA complex. We have seen this earlier in, in the context of copper oxygen chemistry and copper mononuclear oxygen chemistry, copper dinuclear um, oxygen chemistry. Right. So, this copper complex can uh, excitingly be reacted with elemental sulfur which is quite fantastic just like oxygen with sulfur can be reacted and just like oxygen an end on bound disulfide can be generated. Uh, if you have remembered um, that if these tetradented ligands are reacting with oxygen it was forming dicopper peroxo intermediate where oxygen was reduced by 2 electrons. Here the sulfur moiety is essentially replacing oxygen uh, atoms and then if we are seeing that this sulfur 2 sulfurs are 2 minus this is copper 2 plus this is copper 2 plus overall this is a very nice compound which, which gives rise to the similarity between the reactivities of sulfur and the oxygen with this tetradented ligand system. That is quite exciting to note. But uh, one of the problem happens during this reaction uh, and um, that is associated with the fact that this is not uh, a pure compound. Okay? This is not the only product that is forming from these reactions. There are indeed at least two more product or even perhaps much more uh, than total three compounds are present. So, depending on the amount of copper and sulfur added these products ratios are varying. So, this is one product, this is the end on disulfide product, this is the peak associated with that, this is another compound which remained unidentified till that, this is perhaps another compound uh, which is also remain unknown till that for the nature of these compounds. So, if you are reacting with this ligand copper 1 complex unlike the oxygen reaction which can give clearly only one product end on bound dicopper di, di, uh, or dicopper peroxo species. In this case the sulfur reaction gives rise to at least uh, at least 3 compounds where, where we are clearly seeing that one of them is this crystallographically characterized end on bound disulfide complex. So, no matter what has been done uh, to, uh, to modify this ligand system to prevent the other product formation or to give rise to only one product formation that remains unsuccessful. Subsequent studies shows that if a substituent on this pyridine ring is uh, placed in only one arm not in every arm at only one arm um, at this 6 position then it is indeed possible to prevent multiple product formation and exclusively form one product that is that end on disulfide compound. So, this is where the ligand designing and understanding of the ligand becomes extremely crucial. For instance, if this dimethoxy or 
methylene methoxy units are put on every arm of the spiridine, this there is no reaction absolutely with sulfur. If two of them are also substituted, two of the pyridines are substituted with any substituent at this position, once again 6 position, this once again does not react. Any change of further ligand understanding or ligand design will either lead to multiple product formation or no reactivity with element elemental sulfur okay which is a set right so overall the mono substituted pyridine was essential to give rise to this n non disulfide bound complex which is having a clear uv spectra at 540 nanometer and this is purple in color this is quite 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 interesting and it gives only one product from that mixture of compounds from the same compounds or same ligand without this substituent and uh, we can now get with this we, with this substituent we can get a clearly only one product that is quite simple quite quite interesting but this also suggests that the ligand designing has a crucial role to play in preventing or in promoting uh, the desired product uh, that that one is looking for so the other two compounds that was forming that was forming from these reactions are till unknown what if this uh, pure compound endon disulfide compound is reacted with different reagent for example if one is bubbling oxygen through this uh, it's the endon di uh, endon peroxo species is formed indicating that indicating that uh, that that uh, that these reactions are reversible in nature indeed copper sulfur binding is turning out to be quite reversible um, I, I must note that over here this is uh, upon addition of more and more sulfur or with respect to time this peaks goes up but if 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 we warm up this compound it goes back to the copper one so this reaction is completely reversible with respect to temperature so the well, cooling down gives rise to this product formation warming up loses this um, sulfide unit so it is it's a completely reversible reaction just like what we have seen in the in the uh, oxygen transport protein. So, with respect to with respect to with, uh, the ligand copper complex the oxygen binding is reversible although the peroxo or related compounds are forming over there but oxygen transport remained. Uh, remain completely reversible. Similarly, sulfur binding is completely reversible which can be also manifested by the fact that the oxygen bubbling gives rise to this species uh, which is an endon bound crystallographically characterized intermediate. This intermediate is also crystallographically characterized and this is also definitely crystallographically characterized. Therefore, <coughs> this also shows that that oxygen binding is stronger than the sulphide binding for, for the cases with the tetradented ligand system. If benzyl bromide is reacted with this, uh, with this copper disulphide compound by bi-benzyl bisulphide or benzyl disulphide, dibenzyl disulphide is formed, this, this type of product formation indicates that your sulphur is having a negative charge right. If it is having negative charge then only it can attack on a positively charged carbon center over here and that is how this product perhaps is forming. So like this endon peroxo this disulfides are nucleophilic in nature. So this is a nucleophilic center or delta minus charge is there and that is why it is attacking on benzyl bromide. One can also purge carbon monoxide through this to give the copper 1 CO complex. This is a copper 2, copper 2, this will be a copper 1 CO complex. This is also copper 2 and copper 2 complex. During this benzyl bromide reaction, one can expect to get copper 2 bromide, which is also crystallographically characterized. With reaction of triphenyl phosphine this copper phosphine complexes are formed along with the formation of triphenyl phosphine sulphide 4 equivalent of this is used 2 equivalent of copper 2 equivalent of triphenyl phosphine sulphide can be generated from such reactions. Okay. 
that is all about the end on disulfide complex. Let us look at what happens when a tetradentate ligand is reacted with uh, sulfur that is what we have seen. Now, what happens if a tridentate ligand such as this one dimethyl amino MEPY2 ligand, this is the ligand crystallographically characterized starting material. If such a ligand metal complex, this is the copper, this is a nitrogen, pyridine nitrogen, this is pyridine nitrogen, this is the other aliphatic nitrogen. Now, if such a compound is reacted with elemental sulfur, we, as we can see now that a dicopper disulfide is forming, now the bridging mode is side on. Previously as you have seen the crystal structure, it is end on in nature, but with a tridentate ligand system, it gives rise to a side on disulfide just similar to what you have seen for the tridentate ligand and oxygen reactivity. These reactions are occurring at room temperature, it does not require indeed, uh, indeed at low temperature reactions are sluggish. These reactions are occurring at room temperature and uh, this gives rise to the this diamond beautiful diamond core for the dicopper disulfide complex. You can see the, um, uh, the crystallographically characterized intermediate um, different bond length and uh, this is quite, quite interesting, right. Well, if you try to see the reactivity pattern for this reaction, well, this does not disappoint you. It is actually turning out to be quite similar to what we have seen for the side on bound peroxo species, okay. So, this is the side on bound peroxo. If you take the side on bound disulfide, this is side on bound just like this. Each of the sulfides are equidistant from the copper each of these copper right and uh, this intermediate once reacted with oxygen at low temperature, it is capable of providing this uh, side on bound peroxo species. Once again that, uh, uh, that reinforces the fact that these compounds are not that stable compared to this dicopper uh, peroxo species and more importantly these copper sulfur binding are reversible in nature. One interesting reagent in this case is this uh, phenyl isocyanide. If you are reacting with phenyl isocyanide, this C minus will be able to pick up this sulfur because the sulfur is positive. So, this is a electrophilic mode of reactivity, okay. So, this is a delta plus a nucleophile will be able to pick up this sulfur to give rise to the this uh, phenyl iso, uh, isothiocyanate complex, okay. PHNCS compound can be generated from uh, ARNC. Similarly, for the end non disulfide cases, uh, the previous one, if, if you are reacting this one with isocyanate, you do not get any reaction, okay. That is also quite, quite interesting and quite uh, insightful that these sulfur uh, or these sulfides are nucleophilic in nature and nucleophilic sulfur will not react with a another nucleophilic center. Well, it is also possible to exchange the ligand. So, this is a tridentate ligand, tridentate ligand can be exchanged with a tetradentate ligand. Quite interestingly, this side on bound disulfide now will give end on bound disulfide that is I would say quite fascinating. Not only oxygen ligand exchange, the ligand for the copper can also be exchanged and sulfur can be transferred to, um, uh, uh, to isocyanide to give isothiocyanide. Again carbon monoxide can be displacing uh, this sulfur unit just like what we have seen in case of the end on disulfide. Phosphine reactions are interesting. If you see only two equivalent of phosphine is added then then we will be able to see that, um, then we will be able to see that two equivalent of phosphine sulphide is getting generated. If four equivalent is reacted, the reaction is similar to what we have seen in case of the end on disulphide. Quite um, surprising, not surprisingly I would say, um, benzyl bromide as you have seen that this reagent reacting with benzyl bromide to give bibenzyl bisulphide but in this case there is no reaction. Once again reinforcing the fact that these disulfides are 
electrophilic quite interestingly as you can see um, these, um, these um, benzyl bromide reactions and isocyanide reactions are, are quite clear that the reactivity pattern for for these uh, disulfide, endon disulfide versus sidon disulfides are completely different. So, sidon disulfides are electrophilic in nature that is this one, this reaction demonstrate that, no product formation also demonstrate that, endon disulfide that is this one is nucleophilic in nature. So, there is a delta minus here, delta plus here this delta minus will react with benzyl bromide and and um, and therefore we will see that ben, bibenzyl bi, bisulfide will be forming on the other hand this sulfide will not be able to react with isocyanide right overall this is what uh, settles then that sidon disulfides are are looking like electrophilic in nature and the endon disulfides are nucleophilic in nature. There are many other copper sulfur complexes since then has been reported and it is quite interesting to note that these are the these are the really beautiful type of compound that one can one can get the reactivity pattern uh, and some of their reactivity towards nitrous oxide it has also been studied to show that these some of these could be useful intermediate to understand the nitrous oxide reductase chemistry. We will not discuss too much about all these different uh, different thing that. So, these uh, different copper sulphide co copper sulphur chemistry that has been known are also quite interesting. All these compounds uh, gives rise to the new and exciting modes of binding with copper and sulphide. Overall these, these are the different compounds that, that has been reported so far, much more are coming. But one thing to notice that none of these actually exactly represent 4 copper 1 sulphur motif. Okay. These, these compounds remain quite exciting, their reactivity patterns are quite important and interesting as well. But um, perhaps what is most interesting is, is there is a new twist in this copper G chemistry and that is the, the, uh, the questionable ligand that was over there. Now this ligand is turning out to be not the what aqua or the hydroxy moiety but it is a sulphur. So, a second sulphur unit has been identified previously this was the core structure proposed for copper 1 sulphide. Now, this new report suggests that, that there is a second sulphide that is present and bridge between copper 1 and copper 4. So, the mechanistic studies that we, we, have, uh, we have proposed or we have seen previously in the literature that need to be, uh, need to be perhaps reconsidered and, uh, and uh, this now then settles that this is if you look at this is a dicopper disulfide bridge in one sense and, and in other sense that two copper centers are also attached overall 4 copper disulfide not 4 copper 1 sulfide unit as you have also clearly seen each of the coppers are having 2 histidine over here and all the way here but this copper is having one histidine. So, likely it is likely that this is one of the site for, for, for the nitrous oxide binding, but uh, the detailed mechanism perhaps need to be reconsidered. Uh, overall this remains a, a puzzle in the, in, the, in, the, in the synthetic chemistry as well as the uh, understanding of the biological mechanism of this nitrous oxide reductase. With this let us, uh, let us uh, wait for the next class. So, in, in this class I hope we are able to discuss in brief the state of the art nitrous oxide reduction chemistry. Nitrous oxide is getting reduced to nitrogen, but the mechanism can be questioned. It is now believed or now clearly shown that it is 4 copper and 2 sulphide that is involved into the nitrous oxide reductase. Therefore, the earlier structure is now refined and um, the mechanism that has been suggested earlier need to be need to be reconsidered. But most importantly uh, this structure or this enzyme structure has given rise to the enough interest of, of, uh, of synthetic chemists to study the copper sulphide chemistry which has given many different complexes two of those reactivity we have seen endon disulfide is 
nucleophilic in nature and Sidon disulfide is electrophilic in nature right. And of course, none of the, these are capable actually to convert nitrous oxide to nitrogen. So, therefore, much more studies are required, much more rigorous and long term studies are required to mimic and catalyze, um, catalyze nitrous oxide to nitrogen by a synthetic model complex all right. Keep studying, we will see you in the next class. Thank you.